presentation. Six years ago, we started our journey. A journey inspired by the most pressing challenges this world faces. A journey to strengthen communities through the power of social entrepreneurship. A journey that saw us convert challenges into opportunities and led to the initiation of six social enterprises. Creation of 150 plus entrepreneurs and impacting more than 10,000 lives. We, a team of 70 undergraduate students, believe that business innovation is the key to ensure human progress. Pursuing this dogma, we initiated our two flagship projects, Project Talim and Project Sahas. Imagine being forced to flee your own country and living a life stripped of the most basic human rights. This is the reality that looms over 68.5 million refugees around the world. Unfortunately, children lie at the heart of this tragedy being unable to witness the joys of childhood. Shaheen Bagh is a refugee settlement in southern Delhi where people have experienced the horrors of forceful displacement. It was here that we met Gulafsa, a seven-year-old girl deprived of education. Gulafsa was just one of the many children in Shaheen Bagh who were part of a much bigger crisis that prevented refugee children from realizing their dreams. To see why children like Gulafsa had no access to primary education, we studied the crisis and identified three major roadblocks. Most of the communities do not have documents which render government schools inaccessible. Even if some are allowed to attend school, they struggle to cope with the curriculum due to years of missed schooling. Children are unable to study due to the trauma they faced in the home country. Amidst this crisis, we saw that these children had resilience and capabilities and deserved a chance to drive their own destinies. Hence, we initiated Project Talim. Talim meaning education. Talim is a dream that seeks to enable access to primary education for the refugee community through a self-sustaining social enterprise. To make this a reality, we assess the learning capabilities of the children through rigorous tests and interactive games. We then identify an entrepreneur from the community itself who shall be the teacher. She is provided with microcredit to establish Talim centers within refugee camps. The community teacher is the core of our project, enabling children to truly connect with her. To get students into Talim centers, we approach local community-based organizations who help us mobilize children to our learning facility. Following this, we devise a curriculum in association with our knowledge partner, Katha, a renowned NGO having 30 plus years of experience in education. The curriculum devised exclusively for the community is centered around active story-based learning and trains our students in language, science and arithmetic. Our method allows us to group children on the basis of their learning capabilities. This enables them to cope with the huge learning gaps due to years of missed schooling. To ensure the continuity of methods that we have devised, the entrepreneur is simultaneously trained in a threefold process. She charges Rs 275 per child per month to sustain her own income, 10% of which is retained for reinvestment purposes. Ms. Ifat, our lead entrepreneur from Shaheen Bagh, was the one who made Talim possible. Now, she earns Rs 11,000 every month while also enabling Ms. Sirat, our second entrepreneur, to earn a sustainable income. Acknowledging their efforts, the centre was adopted by Ujjala Foundation, which now provides a fixed incentive of Rs 10,000 per month to our entrepreneurs, increasing their income to Rs 20,000. However, we realised that children in another volatile refugee camp, Shram Vihar, were still unable to climb the primary ladder towards success. Thus, we went on to successfully replicate our centre in the area which is now adopted by Guncha Foundation. Sustaining two lives, this new centre has enrolled more than 90 children. In just one year, 
Primary enrollment rates in our areas have improved by more than 70%, making education a reality for these children. Gulafsa, who was unable to read even a sentence in English, now has a learning level of a grade 2 student. Let's hear it from Gulafsa. Our knowledge partner Katha now provides certification to recognize what children have learned at our Talim centers, finally bringing them into the mainstream. In the coming year, we aim to replicate our model to six more refugee camps across the country. By approaching numerous government and non-government organizations, we dream to take Talim to the world's most fragile refugee camps. Tali, initially started to educate refugee children, now stands as a symbol of hope and prosperity for the community. But this journey did not end here. Guided by a maxim of making human progress our business, we explored more opportunities. Opportunities to empower more people and sustain more lives. Medical science has given humanity the answers to the most devastating diseases, saving more than 9 million lives every year. Despite exemplary advancements, there are answers that still need to be found for diseases that affect millions. Breast cancer is once a ailment which has affected over 18 lakh women in India. Nearly 70% of the cases are diagnosed in the third or fourth stage. One such survivor that we met was Anita, a lady who was recently treated for breast cancer. A mastectomy was unfortunately the only resort for her, causing even more problems. She was plagued with low self-esteem, unable to even step out of her home, suffering from body weight imbalances, uneven dropping shoulders and chronic backache, she could not even perform her daily chores. So what options does a survivor like Anita have? A breast reconstruction surgery was out of reach for her, while a silicon-based external breast prosthesis costed more than rupees 8,000. The other alternatives based out of foam are not fit for use and don't address the critical issue of body weight imbalances. Amongst these problems, we saw an opportunity, an opportunity to help every mastectomy survivor regain her lost confidence. And hence, we initiated Project Sahas. Under Sahas, we aim to develop a prosthesis that was comfortable and within reach for masses. We conducted research and development by engaging with numerous stakeholders such as doctors, NGOs and survivors. After extensive research, we have innovated our first of its kind cotton-based press prosthesis which is specifically designed for the Indian body structure. Our product is made from multiple layers of recycled cotton which suitably addresses all of the problems stated before. It has also been approved for use by doctors from AIMS and four other hospitals. This was done under CANFEM, a joint enterprise between Inactus DCAC and Vinova Cancer. This innovative product is manufactured by underprivileged women who are trained in a four week long training module. By following a segmented marketing strategy, we have empowered our entrepreneurs to earn a sustainable income. In order to reach out to our target consumers, we explored and identified marketing channels. Thus, we tie up with doctors who act as the primary outreach channel for our product. This year, we have successfully tied up with 9 doctors who recommend our product to their patients. This growing network of our partner doctors led to the initiation of Sahas' digital portal, Canwin, allowing for sustainability and scalability of the project. Doctors can now place orders for their patients using Canwin and can get the products customized with respect to their size, shape and weight so desired. 
the entrepreneur then manufactures the product which is shipped within 7 days and the payment is digitally transferred to our entrepreneurs canwin has enabled access to the most affordable and comfortable custom made processes for the very first time this year we reached out to over 20 lingerie shops helping us penetrate deeper into the local market however we realized that more was needed to be done to fight this epidemic of a disease hence we organized awareness camps sensitizing over 1500 people regarding the importance of early detection and breast prosthesis through our all round efforts more than 300 women rely on our product anita one of our first customers now leads a more confident life let's hear anita's story this is the bachcha जब से मैं खुद का काम कर सकती हूँ बहुत परेशान होती थी बहुत परेशान रहती थी और मैं ठीक ठाक हो गई मैं खुद से काम कर सकती हूँ बहुत We have diversified into the market for mastectomy bras. This was done in association with Body Care, a leading Indian garments manufacturer who provides us with their bras at a very nominal cost. Through Project Stars, we have empowered three underprivileged women to earn more than rupees fifteen thousand every month. We have already gained the support of five NGOs who shall help us scale our monthly sales to more than seven fifty while enabling. us expand internationally to the southeast asia by the end of 2022 2013 was when this incredible journey started a journey that was made possible by the determination of our communities this year we have impacted 170 refugee children 300 survivors created seven entrepreneurs and generated revenue worth rupees 8 lakh 50 thousand as catalysts of change we aspire we innovate we empower we are in masses taking on to us and for us thank you team we will now begin the question and answer session and only judges may ask questions Please raise your hands and you'll get a microphone. I uh I have a question related to project Tali. Uh you say that you have about 170 children enrolled in the centers. But is this is a non-formal center set up, right? So how many of these children make it to formal schools? Uh so ma'am thank you for the question I'll be answering that. So ma'am since this is the only the first year of the project and we are working with a community that has never had access to primary education before we are working more and more on providing quality education or quality education with them uh, so none of them right now are formal schooling but at the same time our knowledge partner has agreed to provide us with a certification for what these children has have learned at the talim centers so that is expected to bring them into the mainstream in the next 4 or 5 months thank you Actually, one of my question was the same. Uh, my second question is, in terms of we've heard about the issue of absenteeism. You know, you open these schools, but you really get. I'm sorry, ma'am. That is in not terms fine. of the attendance, etc. We've heard about issues in terms of absenteeism. Do you? What, what, what has the experience been like? And does your project, while kind of the focus is on education, does it also deal with girl education uh, challenges? So, thank you for the question, ma'am. I will be answering it. uh about the absentee problem which said yeah we definitely faced them in the initial phases of our operations but we devised our curriculum according to the needs of the children so that it can be more interactive as well as engaging with them so that they can enjoy whatever they are studying in the center and comes to the center more often so that was that was one of our uh, way to tackle the problem of absent students in our center thank you ma'am Adding on to that, also the center has been renovated and it has been painted a few times to make it aesthetically appealing. So the children find it more attractive and come to the school more often. In fact, they sometimes refuse to go back to their home and stay in the center for their leisure hours also. So we have retained students in that manner. Thank you. And coming to the issue of education for the girl child, so we actually have more girl child than boy, more girls than boys in our centers. We concentrate on education as a whole. So since the community is living together in one refugee camp. there is certainly no discrimination as such right now in those particular areas so education is accessible for both boys and girls thank you
So my question was covered by the, by the two judges here. So I was basically asking about how to make it more sustainable and how many classes do you cover right now at the primary sector and then how to make it more sustainable in the long run? So thank you for the question ma'am, I will be answering it. Uh, about the sustainability part which you asked, we are sustaining our centers to help of community based organizations which are working, of the cent working in the areas where we are operating. So once we exit, they will take over the operations of the center and help them help to maintain the center in those areas. Uh, that's what yeah. uh, Adding to that, the entrepreneur owns a sustainable income of Rs. 18,500 which is much more than India's per capita income. So that is enough to keep them engaged. Moreover, if an entrepreneur uh, somehow drops out of the center, we already have backup entrepreneurs in place. So our second entrepreneur for Talim, Ms. Seerath, was actually identified by Ms. Ippa, the lead entrepreneur in the first center. So that's how we ensure long-term sustainability. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, you have spoken about... You've spoken about two separate projects. Is there a? Do you have any plans to integrate the outcomes of one and take inputs from the other? So that's one. And do you have? Uh, what do you take from this project? Is there an ongoing motivation, a bait and handing to another uh, upcoming and actress uh, college team? What is the plan there to make it sustainable? Thank you for the question, ma'am. I'll be answering that. So ma'am, both of these projects have totally independent areas of operations and in the future also we do not plan to merge them because each of them has their unique entities. They work for different communities and we believe if combination of these two would come out, that would only result in losing of their unique identities for the communities that they are working in. In the future, in the coming years, we are planning to scale up our model through various uh, collaborations, be it an NGO, be it a government organizations. So yeah, that's our plan for future for both the projects. And about the motivation thing which you asked ma'am, so, so breast cancer is something that all of the team members can feel it because they had seen some of the patients in their home or itself. And about the refugee crisis, we have most of our students from Delhi itself. And their great grandparents were the ones who were who took refuge in back in the time of partition of India. So they can this hear stories from the great grandparents. So that was the reason they can feel it. So that was the motivation factor for pursuing these projects for us. Yeah, just wanted to ask about your project Sahas, this cotton based uh, pets which you have innovated, do you have got some patent, how have you secured, you know, that it's not being copied by the... Uh, thank you for the question ma'am, yeah, I will be answering that, so ma'am... I'm sorry, your time has expired, judges, please help me in thanking Team Inactus, Delhi College of Arts and Commerce for the presentation and hard work.